Hello, and welcome to Module 1, Introduction to the Root Cause Method of Critical Incident Analysis. This course is organized in two modules. This first module provides an introduction to critical incidents and root cause analysis. This process is a way of learning from challenging rare events in public health and other emergencies. The second module describes one way to use root cause analysis called the peer assessment approach. This module is designed for public health practitioners, emergency management, academic researchers, healthcare workers, and anyone that may work on challenging public health events and wishes to learn from those events. After you take this module, you'll be able to describe critical incidents, understand analysis of critical incidents, describe challenges of critical incident analysis, and understand the root cause analysis method. This module is organized into three parts. Part A describes what is a critical incident. Part B describes how to use the root cause analysis method to analyze a critical incident. And Part C applies root cause analysis to an actual event, an outbreak of West Nile virus in Texas. At the end of the course, we'll have a short summary. Let's look at some examples of critical incidents. These are large-scale events that you may remember from the news or personal experiences. Industrial accidents involving a high number of fatalities, plane crashes, and acts of terrorism are critical incidents, as are school shootings and disease outbreaks. How do we define a critical incident? An incident has one or more of the following characteristics. It occurs suddenly or with minimal warning, there's a high potential for injury, loss, or conflict. Response capabilities are overwhelmed. There's a significant social disruption. Or the event significantly altered systems behavior or beliefs. In examining critical incidents, we have the opportunity to learn from these events to identify lessons for future improvement or success. Now let's look at a public health critical incident. How does it differ? Well, in public health, a critical incident is one where public health played a significant role in the response. The event could also have tested one or more of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's 15 public health emergency preparedness capabilities, sometimes referred to as FEP capabilities, or captured the FEP community's attention. Public health critical incidents include events such as the anthrax attacks in 2001, the H1N1 outbreak in 2009, the West Nile virus outbreak in Texas in 2012, and many others. Because these public health events are rare, singular events, we must examine them in detail to improve future responses. Although critical incidents are rare, these incidents provide an opportunity to improve public health preparedness systems. After a critical event occurs, we examine both how and why a system performed. In doing so, we improve future responses and minimize the negative repercussions of a critical incident. Critical incident analysis is a method to examine a specific incident and identify both how and why an event happened. What makes critical incident analysis unique is that it looks not just at the actions or response of one particular person, but the system as a whole. So, how do we tackle the analysis of such complicated events? There are many methods. However, each method shares a common framework of investigation, analysis, conclusions, and finally, recommendations. A key component of the critical incident analysis is root cause analysis. Root cause analysis asks why an outcome happened. This method keeps digging deeper, finding more issues, and finally uncovering the root of the problem. There may be immediate causes that are clearly evident and also contributing factors, 
which may not be as clear or easily identified. Let's apply root cause analysis to a simple example of getting a speeding ticket while driving to work. You overslept, got up late, and were running late. Why? The alarm clock didn't work. Why? We can think of the oversleeping and running late as an immediate cause, but the dead batteries in the alarm clock were the root cause. The solution? Get an alarm clock that plugs into a power outlet. Here we see root cause analysis applied to the public health problem of tracking the flu in a population. We repeatedly ask the question why and peel away the layers which lead to the root cause. One outcome, referred to as a response challenge, is the difficulty in tracking influenza virus in humans. Why? The immediate cause is inconsistent results from testing influenza in local and state labs. This leads us to another question. Why are there inconsistent results between these different labs? The contributing factor or root cause that underlies these inconsistent testing results is the issue of different testing standards in local labs versus state labs. Now that we understand the basics of root cause analysis, let's look at using root cause analysis to solve more complex problems. We start with identifying a response challenge. This is the high-level concept that made this event difficult to respond to. The objective or goal of the response is also considered in root cause analysis, as it's important to remember the ultimate mission of a response or process. A more complex problem may have a number of immediate causes, which are clues to dig deeper to find the contributing factors or root causes that directly impacted if response objectives were met. Identifying what behaviors, actions, or processes that need to be changed lead to lessons learned, recommendations for preventing similar response challenges in future events. As part of looking at the bigger picture, we also consider any adaptations and solutions, shifts in routine that helped improve the situation surrounding the response challenge. Let's apply root cause analysis to a real-life example. In the summer of 2012, the Dallas-Fort Worth area experienced a severe West Nile virus outbreak. Over 1,800 human cases were confirmed, and 86 deaths were reported in Texas. First, let's look at the basics of this virus. West Nile virus is commonly spread by infected mosquitoes. People may get infected. About one in five people who are infected will develop a fever with other symptoms. Less than 1% of infected people develop a serious, sometimes fatal, neurological illness. Diagnosis is by lab tests of blood or spinal fluid. Currently, there is not a vaccine. Mitigation may include encouraging people to use insect repellent and wear long sleeves and pants when going outdoors. Aerial pesticide spraying may also be used to kill adult mosquitoes. During outbreaks, public health is responsible for monitoring West Nile virus activity and rely on accurate information about human disease. These surveillance programs are supported by labs capable of performing the tests required to diagnose human infections and cases. The objective in this incident was to provide situational awareness of West Nile virus to guide response efforts. The response challenges in this incident were in obtaining consistent and reliable data to track human West Nile virus cases and deaths. There were a number of immediate causes for the problems encountered. Lab testing is done for different purposes in West Nile virus for treatment decisions in human patients and identifying infected mosquito pools. Lab testing in Texas is done in a combination of state, county, and private labs, depending on the size of the county, each operating under a different time frame yielding inconsistent results. Differences among labs in testing procedures and standards led to delays in data transmission of lab results. Communicating results from all of these labs to the appropriate local health department took time, and communication through unfamiliar emergency channels complicated the process. 
a variety of root cause factors contributed to this situation. It was found that the various types of labs, state, local, and private labs, had different testing standards, using different criteria for classifying a West Nile virus case. Different labs often use different procedures to test mosquito pools, making it difficult to compare results. The existence of multiple data systems further complicated reporting and data transmission. As you might expect, routine protocols did not work when overwhelmed with the dramatically increased volume of the tests being performed on both human blood and mosquito samples. Lab capacity varied widely. Dallas County was able to test all of their own samples. Tarrant County had limited processing, while Denton County, a more rural county, did not have their own capacity. To address these problems, ad hoc mechanisms were developed late in the outbreak to share surveillance data. For example, once any jurisdiction received a report, they immediately emailed all of the other jurisdictions. Two lessons for improving public health system preparedness were suggested. The need for clear, comprehensive, uniform data systems, and also a central incident command system in each county to coordinate with other jurisdictions. Root cause analysis requires systematic methods for learning from individuals and organizations after a critical incident. There's a number of challenges of learning from experience, particularly when encompassing a multi-jurisdictional, multi-sectoral response. When reviewing a critical event response and performing a root cause analysis, there may be many opinions to consider from a diverse range of stakeholders. Identifying and prioritizing response challenges, immediate and root causes, and lessons learned in a large group setting needs to be a facilitated discussion. Adopting a problem-solving attitude towards root cause analysis process will help keep the discussion on track and maximize participation. The public health system is intricate and fragmented. You can think of the system as a web of interconnected organizations, involving everyone from school officials to community centers and hospitals. How can we address the challenges of doing a root cause analysis with a varied group of stakeholders and responders? The next module, Module 2, describes the peer assessment approach that provides a framework to most effectively use root cause analysis. Evaluation by peers offers the potential for objective analysis of response strengths and weaknesses, and at the same time can be used as an effective way to share best practices. This peer assessment method includes guided interviews with multiple levels of responders and provides an approach to group brainstorming and problem solving, important steps in completing a comprehensive root cause analysis. Let's summarize what we've learned. You can now describe critical incidents, understand analysis of critical incidents, describe challenges of critical incident analysis, and understand the root cause analysis method. You have now completed Module 1. This first module provides an introduction to critical incidents and root cause analysis. This process is a way of learning from challenging rare events in public health and other emergencies. The second module describes the peer assessment approach to root cause analysis.